And Lewis and I thank you, Madam Chair, for convening this timely hearing. Electrifying the Postal Service fleet is an urgent priority for environmental justice communities, including those in St. Louis. Um, we have a unique opportunity to reduce tailpipe emissions and decrease cumulative pollution burdens that disproportionately harm Black, Brown, and Indigenous communities on the front lines of the climate crisis. The Postal Service's current procurement plan to continue buying gasoline vehicles is in direct conflict with the agency's policy to, quote, emphasize environmental issues and alternatives and protect, restore, and enhance the quality of the human uh, environment, end quote. It is also not in line with the policy to, quote, use the NEPA process to assess reasonable environmental alternatives to propose actions in order to avoid or minimize adverse effects, end quote. I am extremely troubled by the Next Generation Delivery Vehicle Proposed Plan, which doubles down on decades of pollution. Ms. Stephen, is it correct that the Postal Service refused to explore specific environmental justice mitigation options in an expanded environmental impact statement? Uh, the, the, I would say that the environmental impact statement supplement that was requested was not justified. Part of that process demands the introduction of new information that was not considered as part of the formal draft or final environmental impact assessment process. There were no substantive issues brought forward through that process that had not previously been addressed, uh, considered, introduced, or addressed in the Postal Service's final environmental impact statement. It just didn't rise to the level that is required to consider a supplemental EIS. Okay, so the fact that I was quoting the Postal Service's response to the EPA comments in the NGDV final environmental impact statement. Um, okay, the environmental racism on display from Postal Service leadership, it is absolutely alarming. We have heard of no interest in outside experiences and expertise that do not support management's preference. In fact, Postal Service management did not genuinely consider alternatives to the proposed plan. It dismissed 100%, it dismissed 75%, and it dismissed even 25% battery electric vehicle options. As a black woman with asthma from a community littered with brown fields, I am offended <laughs> As a congresswoman representing a, a district where black children have made 10 times more emergency room visits for asthma than white children, I am outraged. The Postal Service has a long history of improving the lives of everyone by providing critical public service. The rejection of community informed priorities by Postal Service management is out of line with that history. Um, Ms. Nani, is there anything preventing the Postal Service from incorporating environmental justice into its environment, uh, environmental impact statement? Uh, that's not really in the scope of what we're looking at. We're focused on the, um, the optimal mix model and the total cost of ownership model, and the environmental impact statement is a separate process that's outside of the scope of our current work. So left unchecked and without proactive measures, to serve environmental justice communities. The Postal Service's sleight of hand will produce tens of millions of metric tons of emissions over the NGDV's lifespan. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Louisiana.